Mm. All right, gentlemen. Let's see. I'll turn the lights off in a minute. And see if we can see this. Let's uh, let's go through. We on uh, of course this is session four, and we're in section two, and we're on page. And we're actually we're a little bit ahead, but we're going to have to back up to get all this in as far as what our questions are. So this section two starts with page 14 that we're going to do their fill in the blanks and it goes through, uh, should find our pages from 14 to 26. Have I had a good week? Anything interesting at work I should know? Swapped out some bus stuff on uh, Saturday. You did what now? Swapping out bus stuff. Did you? That was cool. It was covered in grease and nasty. So. Swapping it out? Busted up? There was a bad piece uh, in the middle. How did you do to, uh, if I may ask, to se secure that it was off? What did y'all do? Uh, well, of course, you know, we it was, it was labeled and went to the uh, switchboard, shut it off. Lock, lock out, tag out, all that kind of stuff, and then verify. Do y'all have a procedure uh, written we up? We do. Um, that one, no. I don't think we uh, no, that's followed cool. it in detail, but we kind of followed the spirit of the law on that one. Right. Check verified your yep. meter and all yeah, that stuff. All that right. stuff, make sure we're going to go, and then start working on it. Yeah. Uh, why is it important to really to cut off bus stuff? Well, I mean, you slip up, you can blow that thing high. You can over. blow it up, yeah. Because, I mean, there's so, however many hundred amps are fed to that thing. Right, yeah. Doesn't take much. Okay. How about you, James? What you been up to? I'm doing more demo. Demo? Mission? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, good. And, of course, y'all, I'm assuming taking the safety precautions as you're working. I encourage you, you know, in each one of these sessions, whatever we're doing, to, to make sure that y'all are wearing proper PPE on the job. I assume with y'all that safety glass is pretty much 100%? Yeah, safety glasses on that one and this one we had to wear, um, there wasn't so much, so much a cut hazard, but the, there's, mm. it's in a factory with tons of oil in the air, so there's oil all the way around this bus stop, so we had to wear, uh, they weren't latex gloves, but something like that. You yeah, cells did you? Keep covering all. Keep yeah. it covered in all. Okay. Y'all doing anything special as far as safety out there for Michelin? We, um, they, like Michelin itself, is wanting, once you go into their buildings and their warehouses, you have to, if you're four foot or above, mm -hmm. Everything's tied Everything's off. Everything's got to be tied off. So a six-foot ladder, you're basically tied off. Yes. Okay. And uh, they're, they're very, and you know, you got to have special times where you can do any shutdowns or anything. Yeah. I'm going to ask a dumb question. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. Let's just say out there, if you're working uh, in this ceiling, changing this light out. So you could do it off a six-foot ladder. I would, well, maybe not. Probably an eight-foot ladder. So you're saying you have to take out a tile, climb up, Top. tie yourself off, just change that line. It like as long as your feet does not get over four foot, you don't. Have but to you tie. would be over four but foot. Yes, if you're over four, because if, if your feet is above four foot, they they require you to tie off. And then if you get caught not tying off, the very first time, no if ands or buts, you're gone. gone. Going off the job. Mm -hmm. Are y'all working off ladders out there? Yes. Yeah. Most of them working off uh, six foot. Six foot. Right now, and like in, in the building we're in right now. So there's probably a few cases where you don't have to tie off. I mean, I guess if you're on the third rung or below, yeah. is that is that to get to their foot? I guess. Yes. So. Yes. Um, you actually can be on that fourth rung, uh, and it's like three foot ten. Oh, is feet. it? Okay. Yeah. So as long as you don't get above the fourth rung. Yes. And there's really only five, Rip, that yeah. you could actually stand on. So as long as you don't get on the last rung, you'd be okay, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because really and truly, 
fucking nine. You're supposed to be on that fifth. But anyway, because of your, yeah, because of uh, top heavy. I got you. Yeah, here's, I mean, I, I agree with this 100%, but here's the thing to me. I, you got to climb up there to tie yourself off. Do you get what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Stuff. We say the same stuff, <laughs> but. I know. Uh, it's like. Hmm. <laughs> well, what, what happens when you get in one of them ceilings where, I mean, you open the ceiling tile and it's another 20 foot up there. I right? know. Yeah. yeah. Where do you tie off then? That, that's one of the things. Where do you? Climb up to the roof, cut a hole, and then just drop a roof down there, right? That's a good question. That's a good safety question. I'm going to ask that. Because that happens. Yeah. Particularly like on a two-story building, let's say, and you're on the first story, you're, let's say, a 10-foot ceiling, you might be, let's say, even say six foot. Uh, Ten foot, maybe, let's say, what would you do as far as tying off? I'm going to ask that to our safety guy. I'm kind of curious what the, what the... The only thing I can think you practically could do is take a rope and try to loop around the bar hey, choice. But if huh? it's a concrete slab, you don't need to have bar choice up there. Yeah. Huh. Okay, yeah. Good question, though. I mean, I, I don't know the answer either. I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, I agree with safety 100%, but sometimes being safe can cause you to get hurt. So, you know, you have to kind of, sometimes common sense to me. But, you know, what do I know? Yeah, that's like most time we can actually walk up, tie off, and then step back down and go all the way down to the floor and still have our wings. Oh, really? That's how. You know, but the way you got to be in there and in a certain right. spot, your feet are right there at four foot yeah. and you got all the people walking around and then it's like, you tie off and then you can actually get down on the floor and walk and your are you're still hooked Oh, up. really? <laughs> really? <laughs> and then, and That's pretty funny. Like, so, so in other words, if you fail, you're yeah. going to fall on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah. And that's, what we told, that's, what, that, that's what we told them. That's what we told them was like, we told them that we need which we definitely need to go get three foot lanyards. What, you, what size lanyards do you have? The, the six foot. Six foot, is that what a normal is, a six yeah. foot? Get your yo-yos, yeah. where you're back out of. Now what does a yo-yo do? It, 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 it just, you can just pull out a certain. Yeah. It's like a seat book on your car, so when you, you know, if you pull it slow, you'll uh, with 10 foot or whatever. But if, but if it's a quick jerk, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll catch yourself. They're a lot safer. Than well, I think we have areas. some of those, but I bet they're kind of cumbersome, aren't they? Yeah. Some of them are. Uh, some of them that I've worn are not too bad. Um, as long as, yeah. yeah. Now, do you have your own safety harness? Yes, I do. Do you? Yeah. Do you all have your own personal safety harness? Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot more comfortable, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can adjust it. Yes, yes. Yes, it's set up to you and you alone. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's they're not comfortable, period. So, you know, you definitely want to be as comfortable as you possibly can, I guess. Okay. All right. Let's go over, uh, let's see if we can find these answers together. So, first one, the necessary equipment. Matter of fact, I'll read the first one. I'm going to let y'all read some of them. Necessary equipment usually consisting of a circuit breaker or switch and fuses. And there are accessories connected to the load end of the service conductors to a building intended to constitute the main control and means of cutoff of supply is the blank. Service equipment. Service equipment. All right, Nate, how about read number two? Uh, section number 220.84 in... I'm guessing that's D and E C permits. Oh, yeah, should be D. Uh, permits an alternate method of computing the load for multifamily dwellings. Okay. You agree with that, James? Yes. Mr. Cameron. Yes, sir. How are you? Uh, I've been better. Been better? I hope you're everything I know your circumstances with your grandpa. Yes, sir. So we, uh, yeah, I guess he passed away last week. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're glad to have you back. Yes, sir. I've got some paperwork for you to fill out, but I don't want you to start. I'm going to hand it to you. Okay. But I, I want us to continue on with what we're doing right now. 
and you catch them up with the first two we did. We're doing a, a homework sheet. Okay. All right, I want you to fill this out later, that out later. Might as well do one of those. There's the certificate from last time. You got to do that. Same thing. from James a little bit later, but we're on number two, and let me give you a book. You got a lot of catching up to do. Yes, sir. A lot. There's your book. Thank you. This is where we'll be from here on out. Section two, I'll just tell you the first two answers. Number one was service equipment. And on a piece of paper, number one, you got something else. You got something? Hmm? You got one? Okay. Number one is service equipment. Number two is 220.84. Page, I'm sorry. We're actually, uh, Cameron, we're between pages. Uh, we're on section two, so it starts, section two starts on page 14. So the answers we're going to find are between pages 14 and 26. So some between 14 and 26 is where we, now they've done it, this was homework, but that's okay. Uh, you can just fill in the blanks for now. I would like for you to go back and look at it and read it because it will help you understand the chapter a little bit. Okay. So, uh, but I'm going to give y'all, remind me, I'm going to give y'all session three tonight that y'all can start working on for next week. All right. So, question number three, James. General lighting, lighting and receptacle load for a dwelling is... Three volt amps? Three volt amps. Very good. Three volt amps. Three VA. And that and all that's saying, guys, if we got a you know fifteen hundred square foot house, the, the, the general lighting or receptacle load for that dwelling is forty five hundred VA. So you do fifteen hundred square foot times three. Two thousand square foot house, six thousand. Y'all get what I'm saying? So that's all I'm saying. That's actually found on page uh, well, it's found in a variety of places. I actually found it on page 24. But it's also in our code book, isn't it? It's actually in our code book if you wanted to know where you... If you wanted to put a mark beside that, uh, you would go to... If you wanted to... It's found at 220.12 in your code book. 220.12 in your code book. All right, Cameron, I know you don't have the answer, but how about reading the next one and we'll help you get to it. Each small appliance load in a drilling must be calculated at a blank and there must be a minimum blank. Okay. Well, let's just think about it. Well, uh, some, I guess somebody knows the answer, don't you? Somebody's got it? Number four? 1,500 and two. 1,500 volt amps and there is a minimum of two. And let's check, where are those small appliance circuits going to be? Kitchen. Kitchen, countertop most likely, right? But you're going to have microwaves and, and uh, toasters and coffee makers and whatever else. So those are going to be in the kitchen. Two 1,500 volt amp for circuits for small appliances that go on your kitchen countertop. Okay. Everybody got that one? All right, the range table... And the NEC is found where? Table what? 220.55. 220.55. 
And y'all, we've looked at that, 220.55, there's a tape on our code book. And it goes from the, uh, really the, the range is based on the size of the range. It's how you calculate uh, range uh, KW. And then of course, with each number of appliance, you actually can derate if you got more than one. So it kind of gives you a summation of, uh, of the, the range table there. Okay. All right. Uh, dryer load is a minimum of what? 1500. Mm, no. Anybody else? 5,000. 5,000. Yeah. 5,000 or 5 kW, whichever one you wanted to do. And where do, where do we find that? Cameron, let me tell you where you find that. You find that, uh, let's see, 220.54 in your code book. It's for household electric dryers in a dwelling. Shall either be 5,000 watts or the nameplate rating, whichever is larger. So if you had 5,500 watts, what would our dryer be? It'd be 5,500, wouldn't it? It'd be 5.5. Okay. If it's 4,500, what would it be? 5,000. 5,000. Or 5K. Okay. Uh, each general purpose receptacle has a load of what? Hundred and eighty volts. Hundred and eighty volt amps, right? Hundred and eighty volt amps. Or hundred and eighty watts. Hundred and eighty for each general purpose receptacle. Which comes down to about what, about an amp and a half? You might as well say. Somewhere that right there about. Which makes sense. Okay. When using the optional calculations, NEC two twenty eighty two B three permits the use of blank, blank values rather than the values listed in NEC tables 430, 248, through 250. Motor nameplate? Motor nameplate. Found that on page 22 under optional calculations. It's actually in that highlighted square there at the top, isn't it? And motor, now what is motor nameplate? Where do you find motor nameplate? On the motor. On the motor. <laughs> Thank you. On the motor nameplate, <laughs> which is on the motor. And so that's actual, actual full load amps, right? That's whereas, uh, and we may not need this later because that's actual amps is what's listed on the motor. And so actual, uh, when you get into motor calculations, you only use that for, for one thing. As for, for overload protection, not overload, yeah, yeah, over, like a heater, okay. Whereas full load current we find in the code book, and that is actually just those two tables that were given, and we actually size our wire and our overcurrent protection by that amperage. So, the note the difference between the two. All right. Everybody understand that, what we're saying? Got that camera? You good? You good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Number nine. In a dwelling calculation, we used a blank at the lows when to compare the heat and the air conditioning. The largest? The largest. So we don't use both, do we? We don't want to have heat and air on at the same time. So you have to use the largest. And generally speaking, most time it's probably the heat, but not necessarily. You have to calculate it out. But you're going to use the largest. Uh, number 10, a neutral conductor in a three-wire single-phase service carries only the blank load between the two hot legs. What do you think, Cameron? Without, what do you think the answer to that might be? What do you think the neutral does? Carry the load ground. Which is what kind of load? Y'all help him out. What kind of load is it? The what? Unbalanced. Unbalanced. Now, what does unbalanced mean? So we had, you know, single phase, and A was, I don't know, 15 amps total. B was 18 amps. 
Then what is our neutral going to carry? Three amps. Three amps. That's what we mean by the unbalanced, whatever the difference is between the total load between A and B. And of course, three phase, it'd be, you'd have three legs, wouldn't you? But on a simple house, you only got two watts, right? And is your, balance, is your load probably going to be balanced? Probably not, is it? Okay. So that means your neutral is probably going to be what? A current carrying conductor for the most part. So the chances of you getting it perfectly balanced are about slim to none. Okay. And if he did, it probably wouldn't remain balanced. Something would cause it to change when you turn something on. So. Number 11, the neutral load for a hot water heater is blank in a dwelling. The neutral load for a hot water heater is blank in a dwelling. Anybody ever hooked up a hot water heater? It's unused. Huh? I didn't know which one it was, but no, it's unused. Yeah, it's, it's zero or unused, right? There, because there's what? There's no neutral, right? There is no neutral. So you put it unused or zero. Okay. Trick question. Okay. Well, that's what I thought. When I said. Yeah. That was the one I couldn't find. I was like, yeah, you wouldn't all find it. Is it a trick question? Well, yeah, you wouldn't all find it was. It's a trick question. That's, what I mean. That's exactly what it was. That's what I mean. <laughs> exactly what it was. It was a trick question. I was trying to get you to think a little bit rather than just going and finding it. See? <laughs> See, that's what I was trying to get you to. You don't believe how many people will sit there and go, uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, number 12. Somebody read number 12. In calculating the square foot of the dwelling, do not include uh, open porches, garages, or unused, unfinished, or unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. Yep. So we got what? Garages, porches, mm -hmm. or unused, unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. So. Would a unfinished basement possibly be used? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Could be, because it could be finished, could it? All right. Number 13. Cameron, how about reading number 13? Meaning, especially in various station, you feel it do not require a blank, blank study power to the issue of a permit. Mm -hmm. Any idea, guys? Fault current. Fault current. Yeah. Fault current study. Can that vary from place to place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the fault current depends on the the local utility company, right? It's not anything we do. It's just something we get information from. And so, therefore, you better make sure that your panel is rated to at least set that fault current rating, right? If it's less than that, then you're in trouble. So, so it's got to be more than what the fault current is. Okay. Generally speaking, I mean, around here, usually on a 480 at 65K, panel is sufficient, and on a 12208, somewhere around 22 uh, is sufficient, most of the time even met down around 10. So, uh, but, uh, but you better check. I, our, local, our local jurisdiction right now does not require that, that I'm aware of. James, how about reading number 14? I would use section 220.14 for the calculation of roadside vegetable span. Okay. 220.14. Y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Name? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. 220.14, calculation of a roadside vegetable span. You can look at that later, but that, that mm -hmm. is correct. All right, number 15. Nate, how about read now? Uh, disconnect switches must be marked to identify it, to identify it as being suitable for use as uh, service entrance. Service entrance, yes. Okay. In other words, it has to be SE rated. Okay. You just can't stick any disconnect up. If you're going to use it for your service, it's got to be SE rated. Number 16, 
Cameron, read that one. Generally, the blank, blank for a particular occupant um, determines the minimum size service they should have. Okay. Y'all help them out? Total calculated load. Total calculated load. Okay. I'm trying to find where I actually found it. I think that's right. I'm trying to find it in my book where I had marked it. I'm going to take your word for it, Nate. Got where I found it at. Somewhere. Uh, let's see. It's on two. Yeah. Page 15, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Total calculated load. Page 15, first paragraph. Total calculated load. Yeah. According to uh, NEC 430.22, a single motor shall have an impasse of not less than blank of the motor full load current rating in. 125%. Yeah. And what's the 125% represent? Why are we doing the 125%? Continuous use. Continuous duty. Continuous duty. A motor, unless it's stated otherwise, is continuous duty. It, some are intermittent or other 30-minute cycles or whatever. Those are not. But unless they tell you, then then yes, it's a it's a 30-minute. I mean, it's a continuous rate. Number 18. Blank or more other appliances may have a demand factor of 75% applied. So that's a number that we want. How many more appliances can we do? Blank, when we get a certain number, how can, when we, can we derate to 75%? Four. Four. Four more. Four more other appliances may have a demand factor of 75% apply. <laughs> Number 19, the minimum size service for a dwelling is determined by dividing the total calculated volt amps by the blank, blank, blank service voltage. Line to line. Line to line? Okay. All right. You agree with that, Nate? Yes, sir. Okay. Line to line. You agree with that, Cameron? Why not? Right. You just did. <laughs> you just did. Okay. And that's it for that. Okay. Section number two. Done with that. Now, this is all module one. This is all. What's that? Uh, yeah. Session two. That's section two. That's uh, found from page 14 to 26. The first one I give you is found from page 1 to 12. And I'm going to give you another one tonight that's for homework. It shows that covers the rest of this module one. Okay. Okay. Each uh, session that we have, you'll have a homework sheet that you're required to do before you come back to class. Don't come in with it blank. I will check them. Okay. All right. So homework uh, is required for us in level four. Okay. And um, session one for one through thirteen. Session one yeah. is pages one to thirteen or one to twelve. Okay. Okay. That's where you'll find the answers. Okay. In fact, if you want to do that for homework, I'll check them for you next week. Once you do that, rather than you get an answer from James, why don't you? Do your homework, and I'll check them for you next week. How about that? that that'll help you, because that'll, that'll make you read it, and that's what you need to be doing, okay? And that's the reason for this homework, is to make you all actually read the chapters, okay? But that's, what, that's why we're doing this, okay? Make sense? All right, uh, we're going to pick up, we're in session two, is where we're going to start. We actually... Started in, we were a little bit ahead last week. In fact, I want to I want to turn to a slide here, I think, and just kind of really a couple of these slides we done gone over as far as objectives. We did single family dwelling last week, so we did this. Uh, this is actually where we're going to start tonight. 
sizing the neutral conductor. And we're on page, uh, page 19, so we're going to look at that in a minute. What does not have a neutral? Water. Oh, water. Yeah. What else does not have a neutral in your house? Any kind of like wall heater or a baseboard yeah. heater or something? You're, you're heating or air, right? You're not going to have a neutral, is it? Okay. Anything else? That's probably about it, isn't it? But there's a couple of things we can actually derate. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That the code book allows us to derate. But we just talked about this a minute ago, because this is one of our questions we found. Uh, the neutral conductor in a three-wire single phase service carries only, only the unbalanced load between the two hot legs. That's it. But that can become pretty substantial if you don't balance. So it's pretty important to try to balance your load as much as you can. Uh, the 240-volt loads will be balanced and reduce the load on the neutral. Okay. Now, why would the 240-volt loads be balanced? Because they're going line to line. Yeah, they're line to line. They're the same loads, aren't they? Okay. Therefore, the neutral does not have to be as large as the ungrounded hot conductors. Does that make sense? Because we're going to... It's just going to be the unbalanced load. It's never going to be the total load because, like in your house, you're going to have some 240 volt circuits. Okay. Also, on page 19, there's a couple of things we can actually derate. Look on page 19, 2.2.1. We begin to read there, and I told you the first paragraph. Okay. In the example here below, the water heater does not have to be included in a neutral conductor, so that's where you would have found that at earlier. Since it is strictly 240 with no 120 volt loads. However, look at the next two things. The clothes dryer and the electric range have 120 volt, just, and they do, you think about it. They just got 120 volt lights, right? I mean, on your range, I mean, that's all you got. It's 120, right? You got a little light that put, comes on when you open up the door. Electric range, clothes dryer, and will have, that will imbalance the load between phases. So if, you, if we turn to 22061, 22061 B in our code book, Feeder supplying the following loads shall be permitted to have an additional demand factor of 70%. And if you look down there, number one says anything supplying electric ranges, wall mounted ovens, counter mounted cooking units, and electric dryers can be 70%. 70%. So that's just something to keep in mind when we're doing calculations on a dwelling. Especially if we're going to do total. So look down below there. Uh, Using this information, a neutral conductor can be sized accordingly. So we got, uh, it tells us what the general lighting load is, is uh, 49, I'm on, yeah, let's see. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I think maybe you can see this. 49, 42 is the general lighting, but it says here that 8,000 is electric range, so we can reduce that to 70%. So it's 8,000 times... 70% is how much? It's 5,600, isn't it? Okay. And then it also says the clothes dryer was 5,500, and it can be reduced, and so that makes that 3,850. And so our total demand load, then you just add those up, and it's 14,392. Instead of uh, the other, which would be, what, 13,500? 13.5 plus 49.42. Yeah, instead of 18,442, our neutral load is 14.392. Make sense? That's why when you buy a wire like an SE cable or something like that, USC, for a house that's aluminum, you always notice what? 
the neutrals are reduced size, isn't it? When you buy, and they've already calculated that in, and so that's that's the reason for that. And so, if we look here then to find the line to line amperes, divide the total amps, which is fourteen three ninety two, and we're going to divide it by if it's a one twenty two forty single phase out. What are we going to divide fourteen three ninety two into? Two forty. Two forty. 14,392 divided by 240 is how much? Is that your calculator? 14,392 divided by 240 is what? 59.97. Yeah, with or 60. 60 amps. Okay. All right. But if we turn over on page, just keep going on page 20. So the service sensor conductors have now been calculated and must be rated. We know that you can't do it at 60 amps, right? The minimum size service you can do for this house then would be what? 100 amps by what it says there, 100 amps. But odds are you're probably going to actually do it at 200 amps on a house because Duke Energy will only put a 200 amp meter up. So. But legally saying their next, their next size up would be 100 amps if we got a 60 amp load. That makes sense, Cameron? That makes sense? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. It's there in your book. We're just kind of following on page 19 and 20. It's what we're trying to get to. You're going to have to, you'll learn it when you catch up from 1 to 19. You're just going to have to catch up from where we're, where we're at. And if you look there, let's, let's turn to 315, 310, 15, let's turn to there. 310, 15, B71. Y'all found it? Y'all find it, by the way? Y'all got it? 310, 15, B, and the number 7, and the number just starts off. It said, have you got a 2014 code book? Yeah. Page 160. Down at the bottom of the page, first column. On page 160. It says 12240 single phase dwelling and feeder. Do you see that? For one family dwelling and then the yeah. mm -hmm. Now you go down to number one and it says for service rated 100 through 400, a service conductor. And so that tells us right there that our minimum is 100. Okay? So in a house, we got 100 through 400 for a dwelling. So that tells us that our minimum is 100. If you read there on page, on page 20, it says for a single phase residential service in conjunction with NEC, three, now we turn to 31015B16. And for a 100 amp copper, what size wire would we use? Anybody take a guess? Should be number three. It's number three. Good, James. What size aluminum would we use? Number one. Number one. Good, Cameron. Okay. Number one, y'all. And so we're using the 75 degree column, aren't we? We're using the 75 degree column because it's 100 ounce or more per 110, 14C something. So when it's 100 ounce or more, we're using the 75 degree column. Okay. That makes sense, guys? Kind of makes sense? Right. So let's look at, then, a single 2.2.2. says that it, we're given a single-family dwelling calculation. Let's look at it together. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off for a second and scroll this up so we can see on the board here. So 
we're looking at <coughs> the example that he gives us. We've got a 12 kW dryer, 5.5 kW, I mean 12 kW range, 5.5 dryer, 1250 dishwasher, <coughs> third, three quarter horsepower disposal, one horsepower pump, one third horsepower blower, gas furnace. Right. We got 1624 square foot. It's a house. So the first thing we're going to do is what? 1624 times what? Three. Three. And how much that gives us? 4,872. Okay. All right. Now we got what? How many small appliance circuits do we have? Two. Two? And they're how much each? 1,500. Times two, so that's 3,000. You with me, Cameron? How did you figure out the two appliances? Because that's what our rule said earlier. Our rule says when we were doing our homework on page, on number, uh, what number was it, guys? Help me out here. Uh, yeah, page number four on our homework. Each small appliance loaded in a dwelling must be calculated at 1,500 and there must be a minimum of how many? Two. two. Okay. So that's just a rule. You've got to have two small appliance circuits. And the rule says we also have to have a laundry circuit, don't we? Mm -hmm. And the laundry circuit is 1,500. So we're going to add those together, which is what we're doing in our book. And so that's 93.72 volt amps. Y'all with me so far? Good. We good? All right, now we have to go back. We got to go to, let's go back to 220. Uh, let's go back to section 220 in our code book. And on page 70, we got a 2014 code book, or table 220.42, table 220.42. Table 220.42 says the first 3,000 VA on a house is how much percent? 100. 100. So we're going to pull that out. That's 3,000. We're going to take 3,000 from this then because we already got that 100%. So we're going to take, now we got 6,372 VA left after we did this at 100. We just kind of pulled it out. And the rule, now it says that Anything from 3,001 to 120, what is our multiplier? What percent? 35. Yeah, 35. So let's multiply 6372 times 35 percent and see what you come up with. 2230. How much? 2230. Yeah, 2,230. Now what are we going to do with this 2,230, Cameron? What do you think we're going to do with this 2,230? What are we going to do to it? Subtract it. No, we're not going to subtract it. We're going to add it to this amount that we pulled out. Add it to the Yeah. And so that becomes 5,230. And hopefully if we look in our book, I think we're right. Look at step number two in our book, and you see that we've we've come up with the right answer per the book, 5,230. All right. Step three says determine the range load. So we got to determine the 220 <coughs> what? Table 220 what? 55 to determine the range load, which is on page 72 if you got a 2014 code book. But it says it's 12 kW. All right, so in saying that, so I'm going I'm to pull this off to the side. I'm going to erase all this, but I need to remember it's 5230, don't I? So I'm going to write this off to the side. I'm just going to write this down for now. 5230. All right, that's bold amps right now. Now, what, it, what do y'all think? By looking at it, what is our range kW going to be? 
looking at your table. What do you think the range is going to be? Um, column C. Column C. And so how much is the KW going to be? Eight. Eight. Not 12, but eight. Eight KW is how many volt amps? Eight thousand. All right. Eight thousand. So that's our range. Y'all with me so far? So we're, we're writing that down. Now we got to look up. Now it tells us our next thing is the dishwasher. Okay? And the dishwasher. Well, we got to find, it just gives us horsepower on the dish, or well, actually, it gives us VAs on that, doesn't it? So we got uh, dishwasher is how much? 1250. So let's just write that down. That's dishwasher, that's one appliance. Other than these other ones, this is something that's, that's different. But that's one appliance. Now it says a three quarter horsepower motor. Now we got to find that one, so we're going to have to go to 430. Go help me out. 430 what? Should be 248. 248, but that's single phase. 430, 248, which in the 2014 is on page 350. And it's a three quarter horsepower, and it's 120 volts, right? So somebody tell me how much that. 13.8. 13.8 amps, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to get it to volt amps. What do we have to do? Multiply by 120. 120. And that comes up to what? 1656. 1656. Y'all see where we got that? See how we got that? Everybody good? Uh, the next thing it says a three quarter horsepower disposal. So let's stay right there where we're at on our 432 48. Three quarter. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, we done done that one. My bad. One horsepower, 240 volt pump. One horsepower, 240 volt pump. How much is it going to be? 8.0. 8.0. Why don't we use the 230? Because it says we could, right? There's not a 240, so we take the one closest to it, right? So it's eight amps, okay, times what? 240. 240, which is what, about 1932? 1920. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 1920, I get 32. Eight times four is 30. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I'm getting that from, okay, all right. 1920, now one more. It says there is a blower, so it's a third horsepower. Let's, let's stay right there where we're at. A third horsepower, 120 volts, is how many amps? 120 volts? Yeah. 7.2. 7.2. So now we've got to get volt amps to that. This is 7.2 times 120, which is how much? Let's see if we run right now. Let's just add all these together. Let's go ahead and add all these up and see what we get. Four appliances, what can I do? Turn back to 220. Let's go back to 220. Very good. 75%. 75%. And why? Because it tells us that what? Four or more. Four or more. We can do it by how much was the percent again? 75%. Okay. 
220.53 shall be permissible to apply the demand factor 75% to the nameplate of four or more appliances and all those were fastened in place. A dishwasher, a disposal, a pump, and a blower. All those are fastened in place appliances. So now we're going to take that 5690 and we're going to multiply it times 75%. Forty-two sixty. How much? Four thousand two hundred sixty-seven point five. Forty-two fifty-seven. Mm -hmm. Or sixty-seven. Yes, sir. Forty-two sixty-seven point five. Let's make it sixty-eight then. Cool. Forty-two sixty-eight. All right. Okay. Forty-two sixty-eight. So now we've got uh, we got fifty-two thirty. We had eight thousand. I forgot to put the dryer up there, didn't I? How much was the dryer? Um, was it 5,500? Now we got this. So this is just uh, appliances. Is how much? 42.68? Let's add all those up and see how much we get. Step seven on page 20, that's where we're at. Step eight, we've got to do one more thing. We've got to do one more thing. It says we have to take, because our largest motor, we have to do it by 125%. So we've got to find out which one was our largest motor. We can go back and look at the volt amps and see which one that was. Okay? See what that was. The largest motor is a 1656 VA. Hmm. Hmm. Wouldn't it be then? I'm just I'm sitting here. I read. I went. Hmm. I agree, Nate. I think they're wrong. Why wouldn't it be the pump? It's more volt amps, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's just see. Let's. Let's make sure that we're right before we conclude that they're wrong, okay? All right, let's go to, let's read the rule. Uh, let's, let's go to 43017 and read the rule. Let's don't, let's don't jump to that conclusion before we, let's read it and make sure. Uh, uh, huh. Mm hmm. Maybe they wasn't wrong. Read the uh, rule. Yeah. Full load current. Full load current. The full load current, the largest one we had actually 13.8 amps, 8 amps, and 7.2 amps. Y'all understand what it's saying there, guys? So then, even though the volt amps is more for the other one, the current is more for the smaller one. And so that's the reason we choose the 13.8 amp one. Y'all can you see that, James? And so then that becomes 1656 times 25%. 1656 times 25%, how much is that equal to? Four hundred and fourteen. Right, what are we going to do with that four hundred and fourteen? Add it to the twenty-two. Add it to this. And how much do we get? 23, 412. Volt amps, right? Yes. All right, and we want to know, like our service size, what are we going to do with that, that 23,412 23, volt amps, Cameron? If we want to know our service size, we've got to get the what? We've got to get the amps, right? And this is volt amps. This is volts times amps. And so we want to get the amps. What do we got to do with this 23,412? 
on a single phase house. What do we got? How do we get from volt amps to amps? What do we do? What do you think we do? Just think about it. If this is volts times amps, volts times amps, that's volt amps or watts, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Divide it by volts, which is how much? On your house, on this dwelling, how much is it? What did it say it was? A house is 120, 240. 23,412 divided by 240 is how many amps? 97.56. What is our minimum size service going to be? 100 amps. 100 amps. Okay? 100 amps. And that's 23 required. Matter of fact, let's turn. 23, 79C, 230. Sorry, 230. 230. Let's turn it there and see what it says. 23079C. Uh, I've marked it. 23079C says what? Somebody read that. One family dwelling for a one family for for one family dwelling to serve this connected me shall have a range of not less than 100 inches. Yep. Three wide. 100 amps. Okay. So there we go. So it's 100 amperage or 200? Well, no, it's just 100 amps, right? Yeah. I mean, it can be 100 amps. So this would, the answer to this one would be 100 amps. If it were more than 100? Yeah, if it was more than 100, uh, then yes, we'd go to a 200. Yeah. We'd go to a 200. You could actually, you wouldn't have to go to the 200. You could actually go to the next higher fuse size or circuit breaker size. Let's say, let's say if it was 118 amps. You'd go to 240.6 and you'd find what the next standard size fuse or breaker is. That's what you'd do. And like for 118 amps, I think the next size up would be 125. 240. See if I'm right. 240.6. Yeah, I remember. 125 amps. Okay. So 240.6 gives you standard size fuses and circuit breakers. Y'all see that there? Yes. Okay. So you just got to make sure if you're under 100, it's got to be 100. And anything else, it can be the next standard size fuse up. Okay. okay. Or circuit breaker. All right. Uh, two point. Number page 21, we're just going to kind of walk through this one because we're really, we're doing the same thing. I'm not going to put it on the board. Let's just kind of look at it together. Stop me if you got any questions. Okay. We really got the same thing. It's just a little bigger. We got 1,775 square foot. You see what we got there? We got a range. We got a dryer. We got a dishwasher, a disposal, an attic fan, a blower, an electric. But here's the only thing is we have an electric furnace. That's the kicker in this one. Electric furnace, 20 kW. And then it says air conditioning unit with a nameplate of 25 amps. So, step number one, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. Square foot times three. 1775 times three, 5325. Y'all with me? Stop me if I, if I go too fast. Small appliance, how many of them do we have, Cameron? I mean, don't look. Tell me how many small appliances you're supposed to have in a house. Small appliance circuits. Two. Very good. Just remember that. Two small appliance circuits. All the time. All the time. 100% of the time. Two small appliance circuits. That's the rule. How many laundry circuits you got to have in your house? One. It's 1500 VA2, right? So we got 1500 laundry circuit, two small appliances. We add those together, 9825, which is where we're at. The first 3,000 is how much? 100. 100%. 3,120 is how much? 35. 35. So we take the 3,000, we pull it out, don't we? And we take 35% of what's left, which is 6825, which is following along in your book there. That's 2389. 
So you add those two back together, and you get 5389. We're going to write that down off to the side, aren't we? Go with me, 5389. That's step one, might as well say. That's step one and two, I guess. Okay. Easy enough? Step three, you got to do the range. We got to do the range to, uh, where are we going? 220 what? 55. 220, 55. And it said there was how much? Was the range 8.75. So we may be in a different column. What column are we going to use for a 8.75 kW range? Yeah. Column B. Column B. Good. And so we're going to take 8.75 or 8750 and we're going to do what with it? Times 65%. Times how much? 65%. How many appliances we got? Two. Two? You sure? You only got but one range. Right? Right? One range. Yeah. So we're going to take it times what? 80. 80%. And it does it there in our book, which is 7,000. Okay? So we need to pull that out to the side. 7,000. Let's write that number down. Y'all with me on the dryer? I mean, the range. Dryer load, 5,500. Boom. We're done, right? 5,500. Calculate the fixed appliances. So we got a dishwasher, it says it's a thousand. It lists that. The next one is a three-quarter disposal. If we look that up, that's 13 ounce, 13.8 times 120 volts, 1656. Matter of fact, it's the same size as the one we had on the other example. The furnace blower is what? A third horsepower. That's 7.2 ounce times 120 volts. That's 864. And the attic fan, which it says is a half horsepower, that's 9.8 ounce. So we got a total of fixed appliances of 46.96. Y'all see that in your book? We got how many? Four. Four. 46.96. We're going to multiply that then times what? 0.75. 75% because we can derate when she comes up and we see it in her book. It's 35.22. Good. Everybody good on that? All right. Step seven, we're doing heating at our air. Our air. So the heating load. It says there is 20,000, we, we, we see that it's 20 kW, that's 20, that's how many watts? That's 20,000 watts or 20,000 volt amps, right? Mm -hmm. The cooling load is 25 amps times 240, and as you see there, if we did the multiplication, it's only 6,000 VA. So we're going to take the larger, so we're going to take 20,000. Y'all see why we did that? We got to do the largest motor, and largest motor again is that 1656 one that we had. We're going to take 25 percent of that, which is 414, and we're going to add it to it. And let's add all that together. You don't have to do it because it did in your book. Let's see. We got 5389. That's what we did, right? We got 7,000, which represents what? What is 7,000? What is 7,000? Range. Range. What's 5,500? What's 3,522? Fixed appliances. Fixed appliances. What's 20,000? Yep. And what's 414? Largest motor. Largest motor. 41, 825. Volt amps. How do we get to amps? We get divided by what? 220. 240. Comes up to 174.27. Let's see what they tell us to do on the next page. Next larger standard size overcurrent device is what? 175. 175. 
although 175 would satisfy any requirements, more likely that you'd probably put in a 200 amp service. But technically, you could put in a 200 amp disconnect, put in 175 amp fuses, and you'd be okay, technically. But if it was me, I'd go ahead and do 200. Because the meter that you give you is going to be 200. Why not? You know, why not? Because the odds are you're going to do what to your house later on? You're going to add on some, right? So, but technically saying, y'all see why we did that? And, you, and where would you find the next size larger up? What section in the code book? This stuff should become something that y'all remember now. I shouldn't have to tell you. 220.6. Nah, uh, close. 240.6. 240.6. Yeah, close enough. You're getting there. All right, uh, five minute break. Stop right there, five minute break. I want you to feel like you're paying for The water was through me. Let me show you what I want you to do. Pull out. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Got a lot of catching up to do. Yes, sir. No. Yeah. This is hard stuff. All right, so. Uh, here. I need to kind of mark what you got to do. That. 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 You got an email address. That. That. Uh, you, do, do you know your card number? Yeah, I got the template for me. This one here, I think you would pretty much do it. Student name, class four, social security number. Uh, and you are being able to release it by time as I understand it. Release that identification to your employer, which is, you know, because they're paying for you. So you can just, just sign it. Okay, sign it this one here. Okay. And then it's here, it's just information for the school. I think you pretty much do everything. Give you an attendance one for tonight, so go ahead and fill that one out. All right, yeah. okay. But just hold on to it. I'll get it all at one time. Grandfather sick or something? Uh, yeah. You pretty close to him? Must have been, huh? Mm-hmm. How old was
Uh, let's go ahead and get started back. Cameron, you can finish that when we get done, okay? All right. Uh, page 22, there's an optional method for single family dwelling. This is easier, but it's not up to you to decide which one to use. If you're taking a test, they'll tell you which one to use. But it is easier, so let's take a look at that one. Because really all you're doing is, is uh, doing all the name plates, if you look at it. So section 220, 82 in your code book tells you that there's an alternate way to do single family dwelling. So let's look on page 22. And it says, and here's all you're doing. Look on it on page 20, on page 22. Just kind of look at it together. <coughs> you got a 1,624 square foot house, and you got the following lows, and it lists them there. And here's what you do. Look at step number one. Step number one. If you notice, we're going to have a lot fewer, fewer steps. Step number one says do the 1,624 times three. It gives us 1,487. I mean, 4872. Y'all with me there? They're no different than what we've been, been doing. The small appliance load, there's still two of those. That's nothing different than what we've been doing. 1,500 times two. Laundry circuit, there's still won't have many. One, and how many VA? 1,500. But now here's the difference. Look at what we do the range. On a range, on the regular one, that would have been 8,000, wouldn't it? But now it says nameplate. Nameplate is actually what's written on there. So that, that becomes, it says it's a 12 kW, so that becomes 12,000. A dryer, it says it's 5,500. We list it just like it is. The dishwasher, 1,250. The disposal, you have to go to your motors. Well, matter of fact, it tells you there. It tells you. So it's 1,176. The attic fan, it tells us it's 1,656. And it tells us the blower motor is 864. So we just take all those there, we add them up. 31,818. Okay. That number two says there's a demand factor. Let's turn to 220.82b. 220.82b. Two twenty eighty two b so your demand factor is a little different. If you read that first paragraph, it says the general calculated load shall not be less than 100% for the first what? 10,000. 10, and 40% of the remainder. And so we're going to take 10,000 out of this 31,818, right? Put it off to the side. And so then the rest of our load becomes how much? 21,818 times what? What did we say? 40%? Is that how much it was? Yeah, 40%. And what are we going to get? 87.27. What do we add that to, James? To the 10,000? Yeah. And that's 18.727. Okay, 18.727, which is what we got in our book. Then step number three says you got to do heating and air, but there's a different rule for heating and air under C on that same page in your code book. C, let's look at C. Because it says, and you look at step number three, it says air conditioning is 100%. Y'all see that there? 100% of the nameplate of air conditioning. That's number one under C. Y'all see that? Central electric heat, if you go down there and look, you find that. Central electric heat uh, is 65 percent. So the central electric heat to me would be listed under number four, electric space heating of less than four separate controlled units. Or yeah, is the heat pump? Uh, yeah. So I think that's where we would list that as. So 65 percent is the heat, which is 9360. That tells us what our heat was. And so which one is larger? Central heat. Yeah. And how much is it? 9360. 9360. And so what are we going to do with those two numbers then? 
that we're done. What are we going to do with those two numbers? Just add them together. Yeah. And we're going to get what? 28,087. And what are we going to do with that number, James? Just divide it by 240. Both. Yeah. Divide it by 240. And we're going to get how much? 117 amps. And by 240.6, y'all tell me what size service we would have. What would be our next standard size of 240.6? 125. 125. There we go. Done. Optional method done. Y'all like that? That's pretty easy, isn't it? All single families, what we've been dealing with so far. We good? Single family dwelling. 2.3.0 talks about multifamily. So what is a multifamily? You got a picture there in your in your book. Or tells you. Let's see if I got uh, yeah. when you think of multifamily? Apartments. Apartments. How about a, is a, uh, uh, a duplex multifamily? Uh, you better think real hard before you shake your head yes. I would say no. Let's read. Multifamily, matter of fact, uh, dwelling units. Let's see. I'm trying to find it here. Turn to 220 part three. It's going to get us where we need to go for multifamily. Multifamily dwelling 220.84. Instead of part three, no dwelling, I'm just going to read it here. That's optional method. What am I missing? Where is Roman numeral two? Oh, feeder and service calculations. Roman numeral three, and just kind of looking through here. Let's see what I can find. Trust me, I can't find it right now, but uh, a duplex is not multifamily. I will find it. Or maybe I'll let y'all find it. Maybe that's kind of a, something y'all could do to help me find that. Anyway. All right. But for right now, multifamily is more than two. Okay. And if you look here, we read on here. If you, and if you look at your, your book here, you know, there's standard calculations, it's 220 part three. Optional is 220.84, which we're looking at just a second ago. And it's apartments, and like this one here, we've got four apartments, don't we? All right, we've got four apartments, we've got one service coming in, and we're probably gonna have four meters, aren't we? In the apartment, more than likely. But you're gonna have one main riser that's gonna come in, and it's going to feed probably a main switchboard or main switch, a disconnect, and then it's going to feed four separate meters. 
and possibly five if you have a house family. Okay. So each one of these is an apartment. And each one of the apartments has what? It has its own panel, doesn't it? Okay. So it has its own panel. So, but in doing that, we're going to size them all according to what and what is listed in the, in the multifamily. Okay. Well, let's turn to page 24. Take a look at this together. Multifamily. There's a standard. Standard. Now, they may be different size units. So really what we're going to do with multifamily is no different than what we were doing with single dwelling. We're going to do the exact same rules as what we're doing. The only thing is it just becomes larger. It just becomes larger. So if we look at number 24, or on page 24, you got a 30-unit apartment, 18 or 650 square foot, 16 or 775, 6 or 950. Kitchen, the kitchen in each unit contains the following loads. We got a 7.5 kW range. We got a 1250 dishwasher. We got a third horsepower garbage disposal. And we got an air conditioning unit rated for how much? 3,600. 3,600 volt amps. All right. Multifamily. 30 unit. Think that can happen? Yeah. See it all the time, don't we? All right. So. If you read on the entire building, heated by a boiler, uses three electric pumps. So we'll, we'll read on there. We got, uh, uh, there is a community laundry room. Now that makes a difference. There's a community laundry room. So each apartment's not going to have a what? Dryer. Or a laundry circuit. Laundry circuit. So you got a community laundry room, which has four washers, See what that name plate is? Four clothes dryers. The house lighting consists of 40 incandescent, 60 watts each, three general purpose outlets. The building is furnished 12240. What is the service size required? Well, the first thing we've got to do, we've got to go to the lighting load for each one of these three different size apartments. So there's 18 units. Well, first of all, let's find that we've got 650 square foot times three is how much? 1950, right? How many times how many units? 18. 18 is how much? 35,100. 35, we got how many units with the six? We got 775 times three is how much? 23, 25. 23, 25. How much does that equal to? 13,950. 13,950? Mm -hmm. We got how many units at 950 square foot? Six. Six. That comes to what, 2850? Mm -hmm. Which comes to how much? 17,100. 17,100. We add all those together. Well, let's don't have them together yet. We got two small appliance circuits, don't we? And we got a total of 30 units. We've got 1,500, or let's just say 3,000. We know that's what it is, don't we? 3,000 times 30 is how much? 90,000. So we're going to do what? We're going to add all those together. 156. 150. Now what are we going to do? First what? 3,000 is 100% right? Now we're going to take 3,000 off of that. We get 153,150. But the code says what? We only go up to what? 120,000 only for 35 percent. Is that what the code says? I'm asking y'all. Just to, what does the code say? 35 percent. What do we go up to? Where are we going to in the code book? 220 what? 42. 42. And what does it say? Up to 100. Up to how much? Is 35 percent? 
120,000 is how much? 35%. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take 120,000 times 35%? 117. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because we've already taken out three, haven't we? So we do 117,000 times 35% is how much? Forty thousand nine hundred fifty. Now we're going to take one hundred and twenty thousand from this. Yeah, right. Is that right? Yeah, from one hundred fifty-three thousand. No, no. We're going to take one hundred twenty thousand from one hundred fifty-six thousand, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And how much does that be equal to? Thirty-six one fifty. Is that right? Is that how much it is? Thirty-one months. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on. Now. I'm not sure I agree with that. So, hundred and. Remaining. Oh, okay. Well, they did. They've got a, they got something correct in the book. Look at the book. Look at step two. Um, it should be. They say remaining thirty six one fifty, which is what we come up with, right? But then they do what? They say thirty one one fifty for some reason. So technically, it should be thirty six thousand one hundred fifty times twenty five percent would be how much? add those three together. Well, that's what they come up with. They just got a typo in the book. 9,038, which comes up then, we add these three together, which is what we've got, is 52,988. They just got a typo in the book. So, so we come up with the same answer, 52,998. Now, we're going to hold that off to the side for now. That's, that's where we're at. That's no different than what we're doing in our houses. We just got a bigger number we're playing with. That was step one and step two when we was doing our houses. You with me, Cameron? Okay. Now it says we've got to do the appliances. The dishwasher, there's 30 times how many? 1,250. Let's, let's, let's erase some of this. The only thing we got to know right now, what do we need to know? This number right here? No. Yeah. That number right there? Is that what we need to know? 52,988. Let's write that down. How many dishwashers do we got? 30. How much volt, volt amps were they a piece? 1250. 1250. And why does it say there in the book to do that times 0.75? Because you got more than four. Oh, you got more than four. You got 30, that's definitely more than four. So then we're going to do this and then times 0.75. And we'd come up with what it says in the book is how much? 28, 125. Everybody see why we did this? Well, there's more than four. In, in apartments, you got multiple. You got more than four, it's going to be more than four. Disposals, how much what? How many VA? Per disposal? 864. How many units we got? Third. So then what we're going to do, multiply by 75. and we're going to get, I know that don't look right, but it is, if we, you know, but it, it, it technically is. We're going to get 19,440. Y'all with me? Okay. Stay away. we got to get through this tonight. All right. Now, if you look in the book, we're going to do what? Now it says we've got to do what? Calculate the range. 
the range it tells us is how much? 7.5 kW, okay? 7.5, we need to go to 220, 55. Okay, well, 220, 55. How many ranges do we have? Load using NC column C, how would we get to 30? No, I'm sorry. What did you just say? Yeah, 45. What did I just say? How many we got? What was the size of them? What was the size? 7.5 kW? Yeah, 7.5. Not bad. 7.5. So we got, okay. So we got 30 times, what we're going to do? 30 times what? Y'all help me figure out what we're going to do. What does it say? Which column we're going to use? It says in the book we use column C, but I disagree with that. Wouldn't y'all? Mm -hmm. What, what do you think we're going to use? Column what? I think we got to use B, don't y'all? Yeah. Okay. Because this says it's a 7.5 kW electric range. So we do, let's just kind of do the math. 7.5. Uh, y'all help me here. I'm going to do it together. So 7.5. 7.5. Uh, 7.5. Times... Let's say 30 units, right? 225 times point, uh, 225 times uh, 225 times 0.24 is 54. Y'all come up with the same thing I did? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that would actually be 54,000, right? It's 54 kW. So I, I disagree with them on the. I'm, I'm just trying to think how they would have come up with that. Uh, well, let's see the note what it says. It could be calculated using NEC 22055 column B note three. Oh. However, the value obtained 54 kW is higher, so column C was used. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Well, let's see about column C then. You see what it says there, note three? Uh, oh, okay, let's read note three. One and three quarter through eight and three quarter. Y'all look it down at the bottom. In lieu of using column C, it should be permissible to add the nameplate of all the household cooking appliances, one and three quarter, not more than eight and three quarter, multiply the sum of demand factors in column A or column B for the given number of appliances. Where the rating or cooking appliances falls under both A and B, the demand factor for each column shall be applied to appliances and the results added together. So, we have permissible to know the nameplate, rating more than the sum of the math. So we could do that. Let's, so let's, let's just say we do C. So we had how many units? 30. And so number of 25 to 26 to 30 says we do what? In column C, 15 kW. Okay, plus one for each one, which would be 30, right? So that's 45. So it says you can take the lesser of the two if you read that. Okay. So that's why they did. I agree with them then. I don't think they're wrong. Okay. Uh, a little complicated, but I agree that 45,000 is the correct answer. Okay. 45,000 for a range. Uh, air conditioning load. You see that... Uh, Air conditioning load, it says there's 3,600 VA. We got 30 units. That's 108,000. Okay. Do I need to explain that? 
You good? All right, let's just kind of look through the house load. We won't, we just kind of look at it. We got a boiler, it says it's 12 ounce. Y'all yep, just kind of read along there with me so we can kind of speed this process up. You got a boiler there, and this is house load. In other words, this is, you know, this thing's in inside, it's not in an apartment, right? I mean, you got that. Outside lights are boiled, you know, you got all kind of stuff going on. House pound. Okay. So you got the boiler, 12 amps. You got the boiler motors, it tells us what that is. We got the four laundry, because it says what? There was four laundry circuits, it didn't it say that's what it was? We've got uh, the dryers, and we know that they have to be 5,000 each, and they're times four. House lighting, we see that they said there were 60 watts times 40, and it said there was three general purpose outlets. And how much is a general purpose outlet? 180. 180 volt amps. And so you see there the house total then is 34,172. You take the biggest motor, you got to get it times 25%, and so that's 720. So we got all this right here, and we're adding 34, 172, and how much was the biggest motor? An extra 720 ball in. 720. So this is house, this is house, and the rest of that's just apartments. We good? Okay. All right. Add all this together, and you should get what? 288. 288. 445. Yes or no? Okay. Yeah. All right. Now it tells us that there's actually a continuous load. These lights outside are continuous load. So we got, and our continuous load for the house was 2400 VA. So we're going to have to add that to that, which is what, 600? Because those lights are going to stay on at night, aren't they? So they're going to be on for more than how many hours? More than three. So then that gives a total of 289, what, uh, 45? 289.45. And we're going to do what with this 289.45? Divide by 240. And we're going to come up with how much? 1204. 1204. And then we're going to select our service size. We're going to go to where? notes it's exact it's not a standard size the rating of service size of this apartment would be 1600 this is the next standard size permitted okay all right very last thing page 25 let's kind of take a quick look at this together and we'll call it a night okay page 25 and 26 there's an optional method for doing multifamily. I'm not going to read all this information. You can, we can, you can look at it later on page 25, but it goes into detail what we're doing here. In fact, it may be, I think it's actually the same thing as what we just did. So remember that we had a 1204 amp service when we did standard, right? So let's take a look. Let's look on page 26. Step number one, we're doing the exact same thing. We're doing three volt amps on the lighting, 156,150, okay? But we leave that total. See that there? Step number one, we just add that together and we do our small appliances, 156, 150. You see step number one, general lighting for each one of the buildings. Each square foot times three plus the small appliance circuits, 156,150. That's actually what we had before we derated up here. Y'all remember that? Okay. Calculate the appliance and the dishwashers you see there. 
you got we got to do all those. There's 30 units, 1,250 BA, 37,500. The disposal is 864 times 30. The range is said again. While we're doing 7,500, because we're doing what on optional? Nameplate. Nameplate. Air conditioner is 3,600. And so all that, if we look at those all together, it's 396,000. 396,420. And what was our first number when we did it for our lighting, small appliance, 156, 150? We take those numbers and we're going to multiply them together, add them together, I'm sorry. 552, what? 570. 570, okay. But now let's look at Table 22084. Let's go It's a number of units. So how many units do we have? 30. 30. But tell us our demand factor is what? 33. 33%. So we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it times what? 33% will get what? 182? 348. Alright, so that's what we got. That's, that's for our apartments. That's for our apartments. Okay? That's what we got. Now we got to do our house load, which should come up to the same number we had over here, right? 34,172. We still have a continuous, so we still got the 600. Now how much do those three numbers add up together? 217,120. More or less than the other. Less, didn't it? Now that's divided by 240. How much of that equal to? 905. 905. And so using an optional method, what size service am I going to use? A thousand. That's a thousand. Hmm. Big difference, isn't it? Okay. And this just saying if you're in the if you were in business, you were an owner. And, and I'm sure people do this. I mean, you can do either as far as service sizing this thing is concerned. If I'm wiring apartments, which one of these methods would I use? Option. Yeah, because why? Because I'm saving be cheaper, money. Yeah, it'd be cheaper. I'm, it's cheaper, right? That's the whole thing. It's going to be cheaper. Okay. So as far as in use, practical use in the field, if you was a business owner and you was calculating that, you'd use the optional method. Because it says you can do either one. Okay. Now test time, it would be if you were taking the Germans test, it, it would be an either or. Okay. Uh, homework. Do that. I, I hadn't handed them out yet, have I? Number three. And I want you to do those. It's just the three questions on page twenty-seven. I want you to do the three questions on page twenty-seven. And this does not have to be done by next week. Uh, it has to be done within two weeks. You got two weeks to do this homework. Okay. We will not go over next week. We'll go over the week after next. So you don't have to have it done by next week. You got to have it done by. And notice there are some things on the back. So don't not turn it over. But you, it's not due next week. It's due week after next. And I'm done. If y'all are. Cameron, you finish your paperwork. Make sure you get that to me because I got to turn that in. And, and I think we're all good, guys. See y'all next week. Y'all have a good week.